Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, happy Pi Day, by the way. Today is March 14th. So I'm going to discuss a paper, very impactful. Uh, was 2015, I believe, by uh, Gaddis et al. And uh, will be facilitated by Felipe and Xi'an. So the idea is very simple. Um, the author, they try to combine a photo and then an artistic image. And then they were able to transfer the artistic image uh, onto the photo. And it was a very impactful paper because a lot of the a lot of follow-up papers um, uh, follow through this one and then all talk about style transfer. And this paper was very important because there was some um, motivation behind this that the author discussed. At that time, AI was, deep learning was kind of like, uh, you know, it was going at a hyper growth rate. Uh, but then it was mostly on supervised learning. So the author was, had a few questions like, why humans were so great, good at creating arts, but then there's no you know, computer system that can allow us to do, to do this. At the time, there was some, you know, like maybe some filter-based, a um, couple other, some um, trying to do some um, arts, but then there were the result, like they're not very natural. And so we don't really understand how humans are able to process arts, create arts. So he wanted to figure out, like, is there a mathematical or algorithmic way that we can represent arts? Okay, so try to understand how the human brains work in another, in another way. So just on a very high level, um, <clears throat> what, they, what the author did was um, start out with the content image at the bottom here and uh, a style image at the top here. And you start out with a white noise and you do some loss approximation, approximating the white noise to the content image and the style image at the same time. And then I'll talk in detail like the, you know, how it works, all it works here. But that is the basic high level idea, just doing image approximation from white noise, from nothing at all, and then do image approximation and then in the end is able to extract the content from the content image and the style from the style image. Before I go in deep uh, to about the mathematical details, I just want you to um, have a look at the CNN layers. So this is a VGG network, like the first few layers of a VGG network, and you have a couple of convolutional neural uh, layers. So remember, we start out with a white noise, right? And what this figure here is representing is from the white noise, looking at the bottom here, uh, the content part, the content reconstruction part, start out with the white noise when we do the image approximation. At different layers, you see the shallow layers, the approximation, the image approximation is almost perfect here. As you go deeper and deeper, the, you lose the pixels. Okay? So f starting from white noise, you approximate. So they're just saying that uh, we don't really want to use these content because it's shallow, they're, they're shallow and then they're just almost the perfect reconstruction. They're not interesting. We can't manipulate much about it. So if we want to do image approximation, we want to take the deeper layers, which just captures the high level objects, the overall landscapes, and then lose up some details, okay? So the same thing with the style reconstruction. So starting off from white noise, as we go deeper and deeper, uh, the shallow layer has just very small bits, like a lot of noises. And then at deeper layers, we get more coherent, large, high-level objects. So the idea is to um, use somewhat in the mid layers of the VGG network. And doing the style reconstruction involves something called the gram matrix, which I will talk in more detail about it as well. So the overall loss, that is the total loss here, is a combination of the content loss and the style loss. Okay? And in this content loss, we try to approximate the noise, which is the x here, to the content image. And then the style is the white noise approximate to the, uh, to the style. Okay? So basically, in, in the mathematical 
formula is we separate the content loss and the style loss. And we sum them up together, and then we try to minimize the total loss at the same time. Um, there are some parameters here like alpha, beta. So it's a ratio. Um, this value here is somewhat empirical that the author tried, and he found that these values sort of work better. And then there isn't really any accuracy involved in this, right? It's he just visually inspected. It's all qualitative. Um, some very important notes um, here, the over how the overall training process work. So there is no model learning in this process. So this is a image approximation technique. There's no model learning. The VGG network is frozen the entire time. So it's kind of like not unlike the traditional supervised learning, okay? And then the target is uh, basically the activation from the CNN layers in the pre-trained uh, pre VGG network. And then only one pair of content and style are used in the training. So there's no like batches of training data sets. There's only one pair of training data set. There's one content and one style. Yeah, so those uh, vectors, CX and then SX, um, did you mention, are they relevant to a specific layer? Uh, so it, they are relevant to a specific layer. And maybe this question doesn't capture it. So yeah, so maybe there should be an L here. Mm -hmm. and, but then later on, the equation is more clear. It will clarify. Yeah, okay, so this, I try to keep it high level for now. Yes. And then, yes. then later on, you'll be able to see a more gotcha. detailed. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so, so let's start off with the content loss. So there, that is the L there, okay, that's the layers. So IJK is the index of height, width, and channel, okay? And then L is a specific layer in the VGG network, and here the author used the mid layer because there's something, by approximating to that mid layer, um, he was able to learn something more interesting. And again, we start with a white noise, and I try to approximate this to the target content, which is the uh, output from the mid, uh, uh, mid VG network. Okay, and here is the kind of like a pictorial illustration. Basically, it's very simple. We compare the. Oh no! <laughs> what happened there?
Hey, we're back. Uh, we have a question from online. Uh, can it be more layers rather than only the middle layer? So, um, I th I think you can. Like, uh, it's. I think this is somewhat also like empirical that the author tried. Um, just as you go deeper, deeper layer, maybe you just the content become more blurry and blurry. So you probably you lose the visual, the you know the visual cue from the from the content. So maybe not that it's not that artistically pleasing anymore. So, but it's something that you can definitely try. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, your question. Did? I was just wondering um, if the method was ever at all. If this was mentioned in the paper validated against say like labels like there are, are websites like RT for example and they actually have like a bunch of keywords associated with each artist and I'm wondering if there was any like expert opinion or like keywords from like RT or something like that to so no. it's purely visual like the whole it's like a purely like aesthetic uh, no they didn't mention that in the paper oh, okay. but it could someone could, could, be, could, yeah, could, could do be. that yeah yeah. We are comp site practitioners. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's uh, since since the publication of this this paper, I think there has been a lot of uh, different work. I remember reading, maybe it's the the continuation of this work. At some point, some people did artistic comparison. They actually did some expert opinion, and they're like the results are, I forgot, but there is positive. That's, 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 that's what I remember. Positive? I forgot it exactly. Oh. Here, but it's not this paper. Okay, so like, suppose I look this paper up and I look at papers that cited this paper. Yes. Would I be able to locate that work, do you think? Or? Maybe, yeah. but there are probably like thousands of them. But yeah. I forgot which one. Yeah. Sorry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So. Could you elaborate what, what, it, what it meant by this? Yeah. Yeah, so we were talking about the content loss. So here I just want to give you like a pictorial explanation. It's a simple uh, element-wise comparison between the content and the white noise. So you just do an element-wise comparison here, and you do the mean square errors, and then you try to approximate the white noise into the in, uh, to the content, uh, yeah, to the output layer of the content. And here, just uh, let's just have a hypothetical, like you know, you have a five-channel, uh, four height, uh, height of four, and then width of four. So these are, this is like the output from a CNN layer. So this is not the image itself, but the output from the CNN layer, okay? And you do the approximation there. And just to be even more clear, this is basically what you do. You feed in the white noise, go through a bunch of layers, and the mid layer, you have the white noise, right? And then you have the um, photo, and then you feed through the CNN layers, and you do the minimize there, okay? And then remember that we had a reconstruction in the beginning, then when you do the minimize and then you try to plot this white noise, that's what you get. So that's how you do the reconstruction. Okay. And now I'm going to talk about the style loss, but before I do that, I just want to talk something about the gray matrix because the style loss is mainly about the gray matrix. So here, each of these three by three thing is the activation from these, uh, from the from the uh, from the CNNs, and then like one walk here is like a one channel, for example. Okay, so what the gram matrix is measuring is the correlation between each of these blocks. I'm not hearing myself. <laughs> okay, so for example, if I compare these two blocks here, okay, highlighted in blue, are uh, going across you know, these blocks here, I see the orange color and this uh, kind of edge-shaped color, they are co-occurring throughout this matrix, uh, this, the two here, right? So that is what the grand matrix is measuring, is measuring the co-occurrence from the channels, okay? So one channel will output the orange, one channel will output this pattern, and then these two things are co-occurring, and then the grand matrix will measure this as a high, highly correlated or poorly correlated, right? So that is essentially what the grand matrix is measuring. And now let's look at the equation for the style loss. So here is the grand matrix of the white noise, grand matrix of the target style, 
okay? And there's output from a, G, a certain layer in the VG network, okay? And these are the activation of the white noise, uh, sorry, activation from the style, okay? And then you compute the grand matrix and you minimize the both. Um, there's just a normalizing constant, okay? And then again, you do the mean square, mean square error, okay? So, and then these uh, i, j, k are, okay, so uh, the i, j here means the same thing, and then k here means, again, means the channel. So you're comparing channel to channel, okay? So I, here I have a little bit of animation to make it more clear. So let's take the style image, okay? And then you go through the CNN layers, right? Then you have the output from the CNN layers. And you get these like channel five, width four, height four, okay? Then the gram matrix, this is how the gram matrix is calculating. We take the first channel here in the yellow and then compare it to itself. So first, first channel compared to first channel. Then you do, again, you do element-wise comparison, going through the elements, and then you calculate a correlation, and let's say it's a very high correlation, it's like 0.89, okay? Then you fill into the grand matrix. The first block is the, the first cell is the 0.89. And the grand matrix is, because it's comparing channel to channel, so it's a matrix that is uh, channel by channel. So we have channel five here, so it's five by five, okay? So that's the first cell. Yeah, question. Why isn't the correlation with itself one? Yeah, good question. So, Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question is why isn't the correlation with itself one? So actually this is like not really correct to be, to, to be honest, but I was just trying to make it easier to explain. So the correlation with itself is one, but when you are comparing with it with, with yourself, it's actually just the magnitude. So if you look at here, if you look at this diagonal here, these are actually just the activations from the channels. So when you compare it to itself, you're just saying which channels are mostly are the most active. Okay. So here you're only getting the you're only getting the the magnitude. You know, there's no correlation. Just like because it's one, right? Okay. So if we keep going, the first channel compared the second channel. So yellow with blue blue here. So I'm just taking it out, and then again you do the and then once comparison, you get a correlation. Let's say it's like poorly correlated, then you fill in, okay? Then you just keep doing this, and you just keep doing this, and then you complete your grand matrix, okay? So that's what it's measuring, correlation between the channels. So coming back to the equation, you see that we have uh, the grand matrix here, grand matrix here, then you minimize, and then one additional thing here is there's an L. So for the content, there's only one layer is being used, okay? But then for style loss, there's actually multiple layers. So from the first, second, third, up to the fifth layer, all these layers, the loss is computed and then sum up together, okay? And then this is, I think, again, this is something that I think the author tried and then he found this to be more artistically pleasing. So the overall architecture that you see here at the top, the style loss will be, you know, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and you sum everything together. And that is the style loss, okay? Um, another note that the author mentioned is the alpha beta ratio, right? So something that he sort of played around with and then he found that like at this 10 to negative two sort of gives it like a better result. But like if you see like around here, they're mostly about the same, like roughly the same, right? And then this is like by adding up the style loss uh, down to a deeper layer. So if you're only using style loss at a shallow layer, you get like almost like very noisy image, almost nothing. And if you keep adding them, adding them, so like up until like the fifth layer here, then you get something more interesting. So I think he tried a lot of stuff and then he found that this is more artistic. And uh, another note is the optimizer he used is a little bit uncommon. So comparing to usual like Atom optimizer, the OBFGS uh, is a little bit different in the sense that it tracks the second derivative, so the Hessian matrix. And then what it allows them, to, what it allows uh, it to do is to sort of like, is it very steep take, or is it very not steep and then take a bigger step or smaller step. So it allows you to navigate through the search space a little bit faster but usually in deep learning, 
people don't use that because you're doing model optimization, right? So you have millions and millions of weights, and then there's not memory, it's like memory infeasible to do so. But here we're not doing model optimization. Here we're doing image approximation. So you know the dimension here is very restricted, so it works very well uh, in this case. So if you can, you can try it out uh, using LBFGS or like doing like an atom. Um, LBFGS is like a little bit faster. Okay. And uh, another thing that he didn't, the author didn't mention in the paper, but he it is in the code that he that he shared is if you actually start out with a white noise and you train to the epochs, okay? And if you go through like 500 epochs, you get a eh, like not very good looking image. But if you actually, the trick is to replace this white noise with the um, content image. So if you actually start out with the content image, don't start with the white noise, you do the content image as your input. And then through 500 epochs, you get something very nice. So this is like much better than that. So it is something that like in the code, if you go to the code that you, you, you'll be able to see that it's actually there. Yeah. I thought this was the style image. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, actually it's wrong, I'm sorry. This should be the, it should be the, it should be, yeah, it should be the content. Yeah, it should be content. You'll see the content image in the next yeah. slide. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, put gotcha. it wrong. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is the style. No worries. Let me stay here. And Oh, and uh, another trick is if you don't want to start out with the content image is some people, they blur the noise and then it allows you to converge faster too. So like if you start with this, it will eventually get to there like a bit faster than you start out like here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, what does um, mean in this, content, in this context when we only have like one example going? Just iterations. Yeah, oh. so yeah, there's no batches. Just so you take and the, the output the and feed it back in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Epoch is one image. Is that yeah. correct? Epoch is one image, back is one image. So there is a, yeah, this case. And it's the same image going yeah. round and round. Yeah. Out yeah. To okay. yeah. So this is the content image. <laughs> so actually, this is like a, I started out with like a garbage image, and then I applied the starry night um, to make it very artistic. So that was kind of fun. And I tried some like Japanese art. It looks kind of cool too. And so actually, so this is like, so I forgot to mention this is actually the group that I work on this project together is the DLRL group. And I sh actually start off from people from this group actually. <laughs> so yeah, so these are the like the different styles that we tried, okay? And additional thing that I want to mention is um, I actually tried to do it on the video. I don't know if this is going to show up. Oh. oh, it doesn't show. Does it show? No. OK, never mind. OK. So, uh, so yeah. Quick question, if yeah. Uh, they ask, is it normal for this to take a lot of time on GPU, say Google Colab? No, it's very fast. Like, if you do it, it should be like under two minutes, For depending on your image size. Like a smaller, like two, yeah, like a less than five twelve, should take a few minutes at most. Yeah. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. Okay. But the thing is, I wanted to show is, I try to apply this on videos, and it shows some nice results. But then there is a problem is the, each frame has a flickering results, because each frame has a different styles in the previous frame and then it creates some kind of noise in the background, and then that is something that a lot of papers were trying to optimize on. Yeah, and then that spurred another trend that a bunch of papers came up with this. Yeah. Question? Yeah. Um, is it normal for this to take a lot of time on GPU? Oh, he, 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 he just asked the question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, yeah. but, but I asked the next one. So there is okay. another question saying, if the order uh, is a matter, is there a way to show which order can dominate the final picture? It's a question from online. If the order? Yeah, I think they, uh, order. I'm not sure what, uh, what, what they order mean? they mean. Yeah, I don't, if they can clarify what they mean. Order. Yeah, please clarify what you mean by order. Yeah. Uh, Cat and Tan, thank you. Sorry. Okay. And 
so in summary, like the main contribution from this paper is that uh, the author discovered a way to separate the content and the style mathematically. It is the very first paper that is actually able to do that. And so in the past, there was always some, like the arts transfer was usually like not very well defined, but in this one is like a very clear visual cue that the artist definitely transferred onto the photo. And yeah, and then a lot of hand-based, handcrafted-based techniques in the past as well. And this is uh, actually the first paper that does not need a ground truth. So what I mean by ground truth, you don't need a ground truth of content and style mixed, and you try to approximate that, like that's like supervised learning, but you can separate the both, separate the two, and then train, train it that way. So this is the main contribution from this, uh, from this paper. And let's break. question he followed up. He clarified what he mean, meant by order. Uh, start with white noise first, the, then add in the style. <coughs> oh, adding the style, then the content versus the other way around. I think both of them get added at the same time. Yeah, so there's no ordering like, the, it's added at the same time and you minimize the loss altogether. Okay. Yeah, there's no ordering. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we need to do what you guys just did when the video gets stuck. <laughs> because like, he has no idea we answered okay, that. Okay. Yeah, he does. Oh, he does? Yes. Are we on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, great job. Okay, thanks.
So some discussion points. Um, <clears throat> so other than image and videos, um, can we do style transfer, let's say, on voice or maybe transactional data? Okay. And can we reformulate the grand matrix to have more flexibility? Um, then that's actually another paper that talks about this. And why do we use VGG network? Why don't we use like other stuff like ResNets or Inception? Okay. And how does the grand matrix compare to self-attention? Because grand matrix, you know, it's also comparing to itself. So in a sense, it's kind of similar to self-attention. And I guess this is up for discussion, right? Led by Xi'an and Felipe. Yeah. Image is just a two-dimensional signal. So which, which one? Which one point? Oh, the first point. Oh, yeah. Just not in this way because. Uh, well, I guess yeah, you do perform convolution on regular signals too. Yeah, I'd say theoretically it's possible. Awesome. I think the question is, what are you trying to capture? Yeah. So like, what is it? What's the counterpart of style? And I don't know. Voice. Text. I'd imagine like what's being said versus how it's said, like. Uh, take like Obama's voice and maybe apply it to something I said, something like that. Or could you write Shakespeare in the style of Poe? How do you <laughs> capture the style on text? I don't know. Any idea, you are the NLP expert? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was Alec, one of my interns, uh, uh, started working on that. Um, and he did actually visualize uh, uh, textual, uh, I think it was textual data uh, in a higher levels. Uh, they, uh, um, how can I put this? The images were not appealing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we actually used it, used it for a product, but uh, it, it kept the content that we needed. So um, it wasn't artistic. How did you try to capture the style? Can you speak up? How did you try to capture the, the style of the text? Yeah. So the question is, how did you try to capture the style? Um, so okay. So I should have clarified this. Uh, we, we were basically using uh, CNNs um, to uh, and capturing the higher level uh, sort of feature space of the data. So we, we didn't entirely actually transfer any style. Yeah. Yeah. So we use CNN for non-image data. Well, we didn't actually transfer any style. Thanks for the uh, question. I think one key, key uh, ingredient here is the hierarchical structure of CNN. So, uh, so I, I can't imagine. Like, I don't know how without that hierarchical structure, like like starting off from very tiny details all the way to like a more um, integrated structure, like as it go up or go down. Um, if the task somehow has that kind of hierarchical structure, I, I feel like in some way you can probably replicate this. I wonder if it's possible to take an audio signal such as voice, transform it into a 2D image like a spectrogram, and then a spectrogram with the style of some professional singer versus a spectrogram of just me talking and sort of try to apply the same thing. Sounds like an nice paper. So, <laughs> I want to add a point is, I have thought about this. The thing about this paper that he was able to get the style is you can visualize the texture, right? You can visualize that, you can visualize that approximation. But if you're doing, let's say like transactional, how do you justify, like, oh, this is a good style, this is like what style is this, right? I think it's very hard to, it's hard to see, oh, this is the style of the transaction. Voice maybe yes, right? Text maybe yes, but then let's say like another kind of structured data, how would you say, oh, this is the style of this data set? The like this image, you can just see it, and then other data. You know, and the voice, we can have such a definition. My idea is that, but on transaction, right, we cannot somehow connect the different transactions. It's possible yeah. that 
that it's hard that we connect different type of transaction into one main idea. But for example, invoice as people but mentioned. Is, is it that hard? Like think, all of us do transactions in a really specific way. Okay. Like when you go to grocery store to buy in a really particular way, that's your style. So the yeah. pattern of your shopping yeah, the activities, behavior is pattern, right? Yeah. Okay. So the, the idea is that we can cluster people according to their buying habits. Is that the idea? Um, so we cannot call it style. You're just class clustering different people according to their patterns. It's not style, is it? What is a style? Yeah. yeah, that Let is the thing. See. What that's is the style? Let us, let us exactly. um, that's the question. That is the question. What I, is the style? I want to raise a point uh, which is also has has to do with the, with the, with the, with the last question, which is. Um, from some other review papers, actually, they highlighted the limitation of, of style transfer uh, in the, the, the style transfer technique in this paper, which is, it's, um, is it is pretty much able, uh, more or less able to capture only local features. So if you think like, if your transaction data has a, a some kind of a long range dependency, can, can it necessarily like capture, like say, you did something two like two years ago. Now you uh, you did this thing again. Can you can it capture this kind of pattern? Um, I doubt it. But if it's something that that's very very close to each other, so maybe uh, the same with voice. Like if, if the voice, all the features you can you can extract it locally. Even even for the images, like you see all the styles, they're pretty much like very very local. So, uh, which which also related to the, to the last point. I'm not sure if I have something to say about it, but I thought about it, but then I realized I had some renovation. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's true. Like definitely, it will be easier to like if like the patterns occur locally, it will be easier to detect. But like in deeper models, the whole point is to detect patterns that occur like more global. Mm -hmm. So I will argue that you can definitely capture long like long-term behavior if you use enough deepness in your oh. architecture and maybe then you can define the style in some sort of grand matrix kind of approach but i honestly it's just a guess okay yeah the idea is that you know, my understanding was about this paper is that by having these two different loss functions we are trying to somehow get these two signals to uh, close to the somewhere in between according to the yeah. alpha and beta that we have. Yeah. On the voice, I can understand that there is, for example, this we can have this low signal, white noise signal of voice, for example, like just radio and not working, and then we have another per person talking, and then we try to find a, 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 a signal in between which somehow represents the, the persons as well, for the person, what the person is saying, for example, with that, a voice similar to that voice and the content that we have provided. But about the transaction, I'm not sh sure, you know, how we, how we're going to pass the different transactions to the system so, of signal, I mean, it's continuous signal. You can, you can do it, but then my, my question is how do you, how do you know if you're heading in the right direction? Because there's no accuracy involved in this, right? In this, you can visually inspect. Like, you can pass the structured data into CNN, you can get something out, but what is that thing? There's no, how, how, do you, how do you inspect that? Yeah, so you need an evaluation method. That's what I'm saying. There's no evaluation method. But this, the evaluation method is using your eyes and see, right? But then if you do like a structured data, how do you evaluate that? So that thing that has to come first. Yeah. Uh, on the evaluation point, I think you brought it up earlier too. Is there like an objective way to define the state of the art style transfer? Or is it just basically no? I, um, from my knowledge, I've read a few. Maybe I could be wrong, but I haven't seen like oh no, like the value of this, like a metric of this. No, there's no such thing. Okay. Yeah. Expert opinion. Right. And uh, actually, and then when I look at the videos, right, which like a lot of the noise and stuff, <laughs> they there's, for that, not even a, there's also not even an accuracy to say my, my video style transfer is better. Like it's just literally people just compare it by putting images side by side and it's, hey, say this is flickering, this is not, mine's better. It's literally right. just that, yeah. yeah. Okay, there was a very interesting discussion going on in the chat room 
Uh, basically, they're uh, talking about hypothesizing what if we switch this style and content, swap style and content image, what's going to happen? Um, my guess was that uh, the content of the, uh, the style, uh, quote unquote, of the image would have transferred if you find uh, uh, the optimal layer as your happy parameter. Uh, people are saying that they have tried it, it doesn't work as, as, as much. Uh, and, and I'm reading, it's just a collection of objects with no relation to how they're uh, stylized with regard to each other. Um, on that point, I, I think, uh, I don't remember what we're trying, but maybe uh, if you see the style image, I think they usually they have like simpler geometric shape, which yeah. is probably easier to capture. Yeah. Whereas the photos, they, they, they just have like too much details. I think I, I tried once to have something like, like almost like oil painting. Uh, I tried to apply the style and uh, with very fine details and it just fails mm -hmm. because uh, it, for some reason it, it was like capturing all the like wrong details. Right, so, so we're saying that artistic works have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have yeah, more. No, I have even worse ones. <laughs> uh, so we're saying artistic works have more of a, uh, a simpler geometry, uh, quote unquote. Um, therefore, uh, it's easier to capture this style, uh, whereas in an image, it's harder to say what a style is. That's yeah. uh, that that sounds like the comment as well. Yeah, so okay, thanks so. for the comment on YouTube. Asking out of have they tried it with also the type of Picasso style? Because because the, the cubism problem is that he gets the images and then gets multiple views of a person and then can cast this into the same image. For example, you have a person's image, he takes it from the profile and he takes it from the front and then you know he just concatenates them in a rational ways. That's the, so in my experience, it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it cannot yeah, I, capture such, you know, yeah, such it, understanding. Yeah, it just of, looks very super abstract. Right. It, it cannot does capture. Does not look appealing whatsoever. I mean, you could argue that that's because Picasso could look from different angles to the person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a model different from PGG. Yeah. So, a uh, quick question again from online. Um, um, so they say, wouldn't, uh, shouldn't deeper networks be better at capturing this style? Um, my understanding, and please correct me, experts and the speaker, my understanding is if you go too deep, then you're not, you, you, you get far away from capturing the slide at, uh, as with going uh, too shallow. Uh, it makes your expert. Opinion. I think like the author make a really good point. You need something in the middle. Yeah. Like uh, if you go too deep, maybe the patterns that you're finding are just too Irrelevant, maybe. Yeah. But also, like, notice that as there is no loss function, well, there is a loss function, there's no like metric nor anything. This was the guy was basically selecting, oh, this one looks good with these parameters. <laughs> this one's so, like. Yeah. Funny thing is, this paper doesn't have an experiment and results comparison table. Like, the results are like just images. So, do you have something to say about the third question? Me? Anybody? Or someone? I have. But Go ahead. I'll ask. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I was um, curious about like the choice of BGG, and the paper came out in two thousand sixteen, right? Fifteen, yeah. Oh, yeah 2015. Fifteen, yeah. Sixteen. Oh, okay. So back then they used BGG, but then later on people tried different architecture because it was natural to do so. Because like there, there has been so many other CNN-based architecture that came out, but surprisingly, it turns out that VGG still works best. Mm -hmm. uh, some people claim that they kind of made REST uh, like so the the network we we, we think what we're thinking of is maybe ResNet, uh, like uh, Inception. Um, sometimes it works better, but people just found that it's not as uh, I don't know the word like stable as we using that. They can make it work, but it, it, it takes some tweaking for it to get to work. So VGG still remains as the, uh, I guess the, uh, the the best choice in a lot of these style works. So people like have 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 has been have had a lot of a hypothesis why. Uh, one number one is like VGG is like a lot bigger than um, than the other networks. So if you're look, I think VGG has some like 
the size is like 500 megabytes or something as compared to ResNet, yeah. which is like, I forgot, like one, like one fifth of the size. Yeah. Um, so the, like the number of parameters may be, uh, because it like, because have a lot of parameters, it tend to capture more information. Another hypothesis is that uh, VGG does not do aggressive downsampling. It is this like huge clumsy network that does like uh, downsampling very, very nicely and smoothly. So that kind of act architecture may be able to capture the, um, uh, the, the fine grained style as opposed to other networks where you have probably skip connection. Uh, all the features get, for, like for ResNet, all the features get scattered around everywhere. So it's not, not evenly distributed. That's the other hypothesis. The third one is, I think some people from Google, they, they had a paper, they said that a lot of these networks tend to have like this checkerboard pattern, which might interfere with like capturing the features. I, I, I didn't read that paper carefully, but I think their argument is basically uh, VGG net tend to have less of that problem. So features can be captured better. Um, can I add to it? Yeah, sure. I'm trying to understand also. So my my, my most sort of uh, viable hypothesis was that if you use ResNet, you uh, you have uh, um, you have a chance of sort of uh, leaking the information from previous layers. Therefore, your layer and the features aren't really representative of a higher level um, a representation of the of the of the image, uh, but a mixture. Of, of the previous layers to some extent. Um, yeah, so it may just not be as nicely hierarchical then as VGG. Mm -hmm. um, there is an online question if you don't have any uh, questions here. Uh, so they asked, what about um, using augmented vectors? Um, and, and I asked them to clarify, and they were saying that with regard to diffusing data and finding similarities, to reduce noise slash loss on data topography. I don't understand. Um, so, M M, uh, please elaborate further. <laughs> Go ahead. When uh, you're thinking about uh, like the success of uh, this model working on specific layers, like in terms of like higher order layers in a network, uh, is there any possibility that uh, you could somehow decompose like a style, like a collective style in an artwork by, let's say, only working on certain outputs of uh, like a specific layer? Like uh, in the sense that like specific kernels are better at identifying certain features like at a certain layer that if you were to look at, if you were to only look at a, like a subset of, uh, uh, let's say the output of like a higher order convolutional layer, to see if you can kind of break down, like, there's this specific part of the style, and then you look at the other part and break down another part of the style. So I think that's capturing the channels, right? You yeah. You the third slide. Third slide? That slide. Yeah. He's explaining how this style changes. Uh, oh. I just want to see. You mean what I think? You mean. Oh, okay. This one. Yeah. So, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, this one. Uh, one more. One more. Keep going back until the things on the top show up. Oh, this top. Okay. Like, I, I think it uh, is like uh, in terms of like visualization, like going back to. One where they were showing like all the different yeah, yeah like, like that one yeah yeah so, so like I found that actually to be quite fascinating because like if you look at in my opinion if you yeah. look as it goes further in this style reconstruction you sort of finding like some really local style at the beginning and yeah. the local style appears like everywhere but as it goes further it begins to find more global kind of behavior notice the suns or the stars that keep showing up everywhere yeah. That's like a huge component of a style that, sh that is in Van Gogh's painting. Yeah. So, is that what you meant? Like, is like how well, is like um, like for example, the last layer. Like, uh, let's say you only looked at half of the output, or like like only like specific 
um, like choose one of the outputs on the final layer and like try to decompose for every single one of uh, those values if each one of those represented like a specific style that you'd be able to extract. Like, um, that's a good question. Like trying to see like what each little piece of that image, what a style represents. Yeah, what? they kind of like decompose the style into like a. Style. Oh, oh, that's each, interesting. Each channel. Yeah. Non, yeah. Uh, it's more than each. Do you, uh, I don't know if that's even possible. To say. So you want actually to do to go further. You want to break here the image. Here the game is I'm breaking an image into a style and content, but yeah. you want to go further and break the style into sub styles. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That could be quite interesting. Oh, because then you can say like, oh, I don't want that much smooth lines. I want only like the sounds yeah. or things like that. So I think you could play with associating weights, maybe modifying yeah. this by some weight matrix, and you could be able to do that. But like that does. That'd be really interesting. Like it will be really difficult as well yeah. because you have too many parameters. But like, sounds fun. There was a there was a paper that we saw recently uh, that was not about a style transfer. Probably yes, I can explain it better than I can because I was texting mostly in the place. So I was listening to the talk, uh, uh, but it was about using uh, an auto encoder type of uh, architecture, but then. You could, uh, you know, the, the painting thing. Can you, Rasan, talk about that? The, the talk that Brent gave recently at work. Yeah, I remember. It wasn't was about you know sub style, but mm -hmm. it was about it was like different components in in the image that you could change them and generate them. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember now. Um, so basically, it, it, it's a 2018 work. It's a recent work. Um, and basically, it's model exploration and, 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 and CNNs um, and visualization. Um, they had a few smart methods where you force uh, different uh, uh, depths of the layers, and you see what art artifacts it produces or it gets rid of. And the, the, pur the purpose of the paper is for GANs uh, to generate, uh, when, when they generate images, uh, they need to be artifact free. And uh, the purpose of that paper was it, 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 it found um, uh, uh, components that would uh, create those artifacts and, and get rid of the artifacts um, uh, that way. That, that's what I remember. Maybe we should present it here too. By this architecture, we could condense to this style, for example, Van Gogh in a single matrix and then apply it to every image that we want. Is that possible or no? We just have to you know, train it with a pair of style, content and style. Yeah. It's possible. yeah, so it's possible. So there's a, another paper um, following this one. And it's like, percep it's like a perceptual loss or something, something. And then basically what it does is, because in here there's no model training, right? So what it does is, before you feed the image into the VGG, you have a model that is for training. And then you feed images to this model first, then to the VGG. Then you train this model. And you train that through the, you know, the regular uh, supervised learning way. And you do the batch training. And then mod update this model. Then in the end, you get this model of Van Gogh style. Yeah, so uh, I was wondering if it would make sense to have an obvious extension of this method to uh, copy multiple styles. Speak up. Speak up, okay. Uh, what do you think of uh, copying multiple styles into an uh, image? Transferring multiple styles. Not just one, right? Um, yeah, it's something that I, I actually don't know. I, I never thought of it, but then. Then could you, you have could you please repeat the question? Yeah. So the question is, uh, is there, have anyone tried with transferring multiple styles? Like how would that work? Um, I think you can try it. So I would uh, maybe do the, when you're training the styles, then you will have, instead of having one style, you can try to put in two style images and try to train and see what you get. Um, I, I don't know what would the output of that would be, but um, I think it's something that's interesting to try, yeah. So there's a 
there's a, there's a paper on this, I think it's called a learned representation for artistic style. And it's interesting too, because it's also real-time style transfer. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it, you can take multiple styles and you can mix and match the styles and get like a different style based on an image in real time. Cool. That's cool to know. So there is a question online. They say, um, is there a way to tell which layer um, is capturing uh, what feature when we apply the CNN? Um, and they elaborate uh, features such as color, edge, shape. I say I comment very quickly and then leave the floor to you guys. Um, I mean, c color is across channels, right? Uh -huh. um, and then the first layer is your pixels. The very, fir the very first layers of CNN usually capture uh, the edges. Um, and then you go on uh, to the texture, and then you go on, if I understand correctly, to the style, or style and texture are uh, closer to each other. Um, so that's my understanding, but you guys, please. Yeah, that's basically right. But like, the problem is that they come as linear combinations. So like, it's, it's not as simple as, oh, this is just borders. No, it's like a third of a border plus a quarter of a circle, like something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not just. Mm -hmm. But the intuition is correct. Mm -hmm. So, so shape. Uh, they also say shape. So shape is really context dependent. Well, uh, the, the edges do have shape, and uh, but if you go deeper and deeper in the network, uh, usually, you know, like for if it's a face detection algorithm, the la the later layers usually capture things such as an entire uh, face, uh, eye, nose, like lips, and you go lower, you go lower level. Okay. Um, please leave a comment in the chat room if you have any difficulty hearing or uh, seeing us. For those on YouTube, thanks. I was reading an article. It was uh, I was reading an article. It was about this. Uh, canonical uh, correlation analysis, which we have two views of the same phenomenon and we try to find a, a view which is correlation of these two views. For example, imagine that we have a video and then this video has sounds and it has images. So they are related to one phenomenon, which is the, the video, right? So they could come up with this uh, type of uh, middle ground view between these two by using the correlation and trying to fit a Try to get the correlation of these two views and using a type of neural network in order to maximize the correlation between these two views. The, the question is now, I'm asking that, have they tried to use such an architecture rather than just using a CNN? Have you seen such a thing using, for example, a canonical correlation analysis type of things? Because you have, in here, they have these two views from, two, two, one of them is context, the other one is the content, and they want to get a the view which is in between of these two, I mean, somehow by the last one. Have you seen such a thing, or do you know something? I'm so, just asking, I'm curious if it's not okay. uh, like related specifically to this type of work. Okay, so the question is, uh, have I seen some way to, some, some other way to approximate yeah. the approximate two, views, two views, some other ways to approximate the two views? Yeah, that was applied to this same task to the to the style transfer task um no for me i haven't seen but i think there are many ways that you can um actually so no so actually i'm uh, so there is another paper called the demystifying uh the neural style transfer so that actually that actually is another way to do the same job and then I think they were able to completely reformulate the math and then another way to, to achieve almost the same results. Yeah. But I don't know the details of that paper. Um, I haven't read it yet. Yeah. So I think a lot of people try different things. Um, I have not seen them all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any? Yeah, Owen? So I uh, we discussed a little bit about this. I just want to know if my understand my understanding is correct with this model. So 
you fit three images, one is the white noise, the, the, the content and the style, and then into the VGG uh, network. And this is already pre-trained, so the model is there, we, we plug in the weight, everything. And then we fit the three images, and then we still do the uh, calculate the loss function, right? To make sure that the style matching the style, the content is still there. So, and then we do iteration as well, right? So it looks like it's we training the model again or something else, right? So how does it work? So it goes uh, fit forward. The noise. Okay. And the then noise will begin changing. Like you can imagine, you started from noise that is the random weight. And you are trying to make that noise get closer mm -hmm. in terms of content to the content image and in terms of style to the style image. And how about the iteration? Does it mean that you fit the image back from, from the input layer and then feeding it back to that and then calculate the loss again? Yeah, so basically it's just very it's just like a regular deep learning, right? It's a forward prop and then mm -hmm. back prop. Oh back prop. Too. Forward and back. Yeah. Oh, back yeah, prop, so, but the only yeah. thing that gets updated is the noise. It's the yeah, the, the noise. noise. So you're updating the noise instead of the follow ways. Yeah. The, the, the layer that uh, the content is is, is uh, the loss function of the uh, of the content is calculated. But is the layer same as the style or is it different? What do you mean? For example, you're calculating loss function on, on different layers of the architecture, right? I'm asking that the contents, for example, it would be layer number six and the style would be layer number seven or no, they would be the same. Sorry, I can't, uh, so the content, so, does it change? Yeah, so so he's asking, uh, you have a style image, yeah. you have a content image, yeah. um, and is there a difference between the layers that you utilize in, in the two? Yeah. yeah, like he showed it in the slide where the architecture was. Yeah. Like for the style, he gets like several layers, starting from the first one to the fifth one in his example. And for the content, he only gets the last one. Oh, I see. So the fifth one, I mean. Yeah. yeah, so the content only is the last, only the fifth, only the fifth mm. one. While the style is every layer, there's a last term, and it's some of the last term. Mm. I, do, I don't have another point to make. Which is, can you go back to the discussion? Yeah. Oh, which is kind of like a. So the, 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 the relationship between self attention and. Um, doing this gram matrix. Um, one thing, like ceramic, like we can discuss this. Like I realized that is that I think we, we mentioned this this before. Uh, self attention is capable of, of creating shortcuts between a very long range long range dependencies. Mm -hmm. So that that's why you you do um, that's a why people like 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 apply self attention. Um, but gram matrix, what I realized that is that it's actually doing this on the channels. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing channels, channel is sort of like a uh, what is the right word? The 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 it's not an average. It's sort of like the characteristic of, of this entire image. It has some kind of so it's capturing the entire image as uh, so 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 gram matrix does not not does not have like spatial or like local. Uh, awareness. So uh, I think that's one difference between gram matrix and self attention. So because of that, I think it has a less of a capacity to 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 capture long range dependencies. I think that's that could be one of the differences. I think you're right. Okay. Uh, so I think a more basic question in there is, what is a long distance dependency in an image? Um, two points really. Yeah, two, different corners. Two points in Euclidean space that's kind of far from each other. So, in what way are they dependent? I'd say. Say, if there's an image like left left arm, right arm, they're kind of very far away from each other. What does self attention does in general? I mean, I have not. Speaking of that, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, 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 no,
So can you I can you put a link it. in the YouTube channel so <laughs> people can just oh, go? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, we'll uh, uh, yeah, so it is, it is blog.a-i.science. Sure, definitely check. So check blog.a-i.science. We have uh, three videos of four, I think, progression of uh, um, uh, self-attention work, uh, starting from transformer networks. And then uh, BERT, um, ELMO, a transformer network built, BERT, um, and GPT, GPT-2, actually. You don't have all of those options. YouTube. Oh, you mean YouTube? Uh, on our YouTube channel, yes. yes. Oh, but the blog, yes, on YouTube channel we have all the videos about all those transformer architectures. Um, we ha uh, we have only the blog of what I'm here. Self attention and something else. Self attention and something else. <laughs> really precise. <laughs> and friends. <laughs> <laughs> and friends. All right. Any any other questions? Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thanks.